We'll also look at retro styling in the car industry, where you combine the look of the 50s and 60s with the technology of the 90s. Design of the Times, a repeat Sunday on Premiere 12. Go. The stopwatch. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I just coordinate those movements. I move my hand towards my face. The stopwatch. Okay. It's a tricky move, okay? <laughs> yep, you've got a fever, all right. 41 degrees Celsius. 41? Is, is that bad? Well... It should be 37. Oh, no. I'm going to die. I knew it. Have you ever wondered why it's so important that your body remain at a constant temperature? And why 37 degrees Celsius? It's soup. Inside your body, millions of chemical reactions take place every second. These chemicals work together much like the cogs and gears of a well-made machine. But, like all chemical reactions, they're affected by temperature. If the temperature drops, the chemical reactions slow down and eventually stop. If the temperature rises, the chemical reactions speed up. But, like any piece of machinery, if it runs too hard for too long, something is going to give. 37 degrees Celsius is a happy medium between the two extremes. But how do you keep your body temperature constant when the temperature around you keeps changing? Well, one way is to do what a lizard does. If its body falls below the optimum temperature, it has to find a warm place in the sun. If its temperature rises above the optimum, it has to hide in the shade. The only problem with this method is the weather dictates your daily routine. When you sleep, when you hunt, when you reproduce, so how do you maintain a constant body temperature without being completely dependent on the weather? Well, there's only one way to find out. Hey, Persis, how long do I have to stay in here? Don't worry, not long. Um, don't try this at home. The moment Mike's body temperature rises above 37 degrees, the blood vessels near the surface of his skin dilate. This increases the flow of warm blood from his internal organs to his skin, causing him to release more heat. Mike's sweat glands also start to produce sweat. As the sweat evaporates from his skin, it draws heat away from his body. It's a very effective way to keep cool. You may be surprised to know that the ability to sweat to cool down isn't all that common. We humans are one of the few creatures that can do it. So, how do you cool down if you can't sweat? You can pant, for one thing. This is a dog's way of cooling down. The saliva in its mouth evaporates, much like sweat, and carries away excess heat. Kangaroos, on the other hand, lick themselves all over in order to cool down. Ostriches um, urinate on their legs. The urine evaporates just like sweat. So how you doing, Mike? You're enjoying this, aren't you? You know, I'm doing this to obtain important scientific data, Mike. Yeah, right. So what would happen if it just kept getting hotter? Under extreme conditions, your body's built-in cooling mechanisms eventually become overwhelmed. Your temperature rises, the chemical reactions in your body speed up, your heart speeds up, your breathing speeds up, everything speeds up. This is called heat stroke. If your core body temperature rises above 45 degrees Celsius, your heart won't be able to take the strain. Purses. What? Can you just... Just turn the temperature down just a, a little bit, huh? Oh, sure. What would happen if the temperature in the test chamber was turned way down? Gee, thanks. This time, the blood vessels near Mike's skin constrict. This reduces the amount of heat that's lost from his blood through his skin. His fingers and toes soon get cold and numb because there's hardly any blood flow there. This is why you get frostbite in those areas so easily. 
frostbite? So why are Mike's teeth chattering? Well, Mike's muscles are contracting and relaxing repeatedly. It's called shivering. You shiver whenever you're cold because when your muscles work, they produce heat. So if shivering creates body heat, why would you shiver if you're already warm? Look at Chris, he's got three layers of blankets on top of him, plus a hot water bottle. And yet he's shivering uncontrollably. What's going on? Well, the flu virus that's invaded his body doesn't like the heat. So in self-defense, his body's raising his temperature to drive the virus out. It's called a fever. But a fever is the exception to the rule. Normally, if you're shivering, you're freezing. In extreme conditions, shivering will only keep you warm for a few minutes. Then your heart slows down. Your breathing slows down. This is called hypothermia. If your core body temperature continues to drop, your body functions stop altogether. Okay, Mike, you can come out now. All done. Mike? Coming up next, Mike racks his brain to find out why we don't have androids yet. And we answer some viewer questions. 